self-respecting person does, they go to Earth and Stone Pizza. Earth and Stone Pizza is at Campus 805. They also have a location in Madison if you live way out there. And you can get that wood-fired taste every time you enjoy one of their slices. Tom, he's behind the camera. What's your favorite slice? The Latham. The Latham, also my favorite. It has sweet potatoes and feta cheese. Who thought of that? The owners of Earth and Stone. We hope that you'll go over there and support them. When you support them, you support No Huntsville. And also you get great pizza out of the deal. Yeah, earthandstonepizza.com. Earthandstonepizza.com. Welcome to another episode of No Huntsville. Alex, how are you? I'm doing so well. Once again, stepping in for Daniela, That's who is right. off doing great things in she art. She is and having so much fun. Well. I, I hope. Yeah, we can only hope. She, I, she's up to her eyeballs in work, and we wish her all the best. Yes. It's going to pay off. It's going to be a great panoply with no rain. It's going to be wonderful. It's, it's going to be the, the sunniest thing. panoply th <laughs> that has ever happened. Yes. I've heard. That's what you've heard? That's straight from the top. Well, there you go. <laughs> from the top of what? <laughs> Who told you that? Oh, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Well, with that, let's, go to, our, let's go to our next guest. Where I become <laughs> I Joan <know>. of Arc. <laughs> we have Drake here to talk to us about, it's Dee Dee Daggett Woodworks. 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 Yes. Right. So you are a woodworker, as we can see right in front of us. We get some fine things that we'll talk yes. about here in a minute. But Drake contacted us to talk to, his, to, to, talk to the world about his art. Right? Yeah. Gonna, this is your art. Yes. And you're going to start moving into doing more custom work, and that's what you do now. But uh, what got you woodworking? Oh, uh, geez. I f built my first box, I think, when I was seven. And uh, then... So you had a saw and a hammer and the whole thing that, that young? What's stuff. that? Borrowed my dad's stuff. Yeah? That's probably good. <laughs> I, I Safer. Think, yeah. I think my mom used it to store uh, clunky jewelry. Okay, well, that's, that's nice. so much better than anything I ever made my mom. Yeah, which was like, here's my handprint. Yeah, You're right. welcome. Well, his gift was functional. <laughs> yeah, which and is tangible. Yes. And tangible. There you go. And uh, then about three years ago, a neighbor posted on Facebook for a uh, very specific sized picnic table, and I built it for her, and okay. that gave me courage to say, "Hey, I can do this and make money at it." That's awesome. And that was yeah, that was December of uh, 2016. Okay. Uh, the 28th of December of 16, I went down to the courthouse and got my business license. So Nice. So that was official. Like quick. Now there's right. no looking back. You spent money. It's time to go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then you got a website up. We're going to put that up. It's ddaggettwoodworks.com. And you have a gallery on there. Lots and you of have great yeah. pictures on some there. Some ideas about what you do and how you do it. And so also just home inspo. Well, yeah, right? So people like can I go feel. there and go, you know what? I never thought to put, you know barn doors behind my bed but yeah i mean i did it looks about nice. it but i it wouldn't have looked that good if i'd done it <laughs> so done it. yeah now i can do it properly i know who to call well, well thank you <laughs> yeah, no appreciate problem. it yeah that was the second project i did actually and okay. uh, that came out really nice um, yeah it looks nice i made the wheels i turned the wheels myself and uh, she came up with the idea for the light fixtures yeah. so she she sent me to um What's the place there next to Dick's Sporting Goods? Kirkland's. Um, yeah, just down the street from Kirkland's. Good job, Alex. Thank you. But, I mean, um, Hobby Lobby. Oh, so Hobby Lobby. Never mind. I that's wrong. where I... Sorry. <laughs> she was I'll close. let you down. Um, and that's where I got the handles. Okay. And that's where I bought the lights. Nice. I got the leather from some other stuff. I, I do some leather. There's leather? Also. Where's the leather? Leather is all this stuff here. That's oh, leather. that's leather. <gasps> that's so cool. I thought it was metal. Okay, that's cool. That and, is really uh, cool. Wow, yeah. very so, custom. Yeah. So she was happy. I'm I'm sure. Lots of uh, client involvement with that one. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> do you yeah. enjoy that? Do you enjoy having like the back and forth brainstorming, or do you, know, you just like have so, free reign? So the custom process. I mean, sometimes it's just hey, build this. Yes. You know, like for instance, <laughs> this. Right. You know, he said, just build me some cutting boards. And I said, do I have free reign on creativity? And he said, absolutely. That's awesome. Wow. You know, so I get to just go off and kind of build for me. Yeah. And then there's some clients that are very particular about everything. You know, uh, they have space requirements. They have yeah. color requirements, height, dimension, all that kind Aesthetic of stuff. Aesthetic demands. Wood selection. Wood so I wouldn't even know where to begin on wood selection. I feel mm -hmm. like that's a so, very... So there's a lot of questions that I would guide you through, yes. not knowing much about what the 
perhaps the custom furniture process would look like. Do I need to speak closer? Yeah, a little bit. Go ahead. And uh, so, you know, I can Very cool. I can help you through so that. So are you used to, like, spirit guiding people into their perfect form of furniture? I suppose that could be used as the word. I don't know that I would use it, but... <laughs> Some people, not you, might say that. Right. Not you. So people can contact you through your website and give you um, ideas of what they're looking for. And, it, and, and, and when they go to your website, you can see different galleries and you can see that you guys, you do end tables or you do coffee tables. You have these really cool coffee tables that had like a, a tile top to it instead of using slate, which was right. more expensive. So you're working with clients to do custom stuff yeah. and also steer them in the right direction depending on budget and right. depending on what it's going to be used for too, right? Right. So... What it typically starts out with is like a picture. I get a picture from somewhere and it says, hey, can you build this? And I said, well, yeah, I can build anything. Tell me some more about the project, you know. Uh, What do you want? Where is it going? Uh, What are you going to use it for? What's your budget? Things of that nature. And then we start working and and then I come up with some shop drawings and uh, knock it out. And I haven't had any complaints yet. Well, that's good. Very cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so what else? Um, um, so I want you to talk a little bit about this piece right here. Okay. So you talk through it. And I'm going to hold it up to the camera so they can okay. see kind of the details around it. So go ahead. So, so this is a drawer to an end table that I built. I went to a class offered by Lonnie Bird, who is a pretty renowned master woodworker in, in, in the community. And uh, he, he's up just outside of Knoxville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And for a week and a couple hundred bucks, I built this thing. But all the on the drawer, all of the dovetails. So right there, you can see that that's a half blind dovetail. That's what that's called. Okay. And uh, those are hand cut. Now, is it all the same wood? This is poplar. Poplar's on the inside. Okay. And then the show wood is your walnut. The walnut. Okay. Yeah. All right. Which is also the same wood as this. Just treated different. It's just treated different. Right. Okay. You know. So. Uh, those are, let's see, those are through-cut dovetails right there. Okay. You know, they're all hand-chopped, all hand tools, uh, hammer and chisel. That's wow. incredible. Mountain and chisel. No kidding. And, uh, wow. Yeah. I went you know, to you a, use a uh, saw and everything, you yeah. know, but it's a hand saw. It's a Japanese pull saw. It leaves a very thin kerf. Um, so all this, you're, you're, you're just using hand non-powered hand. tools, is that correct no, or no? It, okay. I, I, so you know this. I mean, I use a I use a electric plug-in sander because it's gotcha. faster. All right, right. Yeah. You know, but but there are cases for this, like for instance, this bevel. I use my hand plane on that because it's faster. It's specific. more efficient. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, I don't care which tool I'm going to use. Right. That's just crazy. as long as I can get it done fast. Right. Sure. Now I went to a uh, Viking shipbuilding workshop. Oh yeah, where yeah, at? Yeah, in uh, Port Townsend, Washington. Uh huh. Last, f- and they were doing all these like hand tools it was the craziest thing i've ever seen so and i told you you looked like a viking so now it's just really coming together there are some really good work working classes in port towns in washington yes it's an amazing are you familiar i'm familiar with the courses that they offer okay it's It's a big there's a guy up there is that right yeah uh, there's a guy up there that um has a studio and he's yeah he's pretty famous in the community is that right yeah you're the only other person i've ever met that is like yes port townsend so so then this is the you know the table and uh it's all hand built um i don't know if you can see it but so again this is walnut um the cutting board is walnut it's just a different finish yeah and i'm pretty proud of this this is actually not for sale this is in my house that's so that's your that's your piece. Yeah. So you were talking a minute uh, ago about you wanting to start developing your own style, right? So yeah. go into that a little bit. Okay. I mean, and, and to me, <coughs> since you're not selling that, you, I was asking you if you made some pieces that are moving toward this style that you kind of want to develop, and you yeah. said you're kind of still working through that. So give me what tell everybody what you're thinking when you're trying to develop this style, so you can become kind of set aside from some other woodworkers with your own kind of deal. So a lot of the design elements that we see in architecture are borrowed from the ancients. Uh, The the Egyptians were doing carved claw foot chairs 5,000 years ago. And uh, Louis XIV and Louis XVII furniture is very ornate. And 
uh, uh, very detailed, you know, with hand carved rosettes and yeah. uh, things of that nature. And then the early American period has the flutes and the columns and all that stuff. And that all borrows from the Greeks. And so a lot of the, a lot of the design elements that we use today, I mean, wor- the world over, are, they're not new. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they're, they've already been developed. And, it's, and the reason why they, they've lasted so long is that there's an aesthetic appeal to them. Yeah. You know, people respond to it. And uh, for me... I kind of go for a minimalist approach. I like the arts and crafts movement. I like the uh, green and green furniture, if if any of the people listening are familiar with that. And that's sort of uh, the mission style, where it's it's a little bit more understated, a little bit more letting the wood do the talking rather than embellishing the wood to try to make it look pretty, you know, let, letting the grain of the wood, letting the beauty of the wood just come through naturally. Mm. That's that's where I lean towards, and I'm still trying to work on that that style. I doodle a lot. I uh, have a lot of sketchbooks filled up with uh, crazy ideas and crazy, you know, sketches, I guess. But uh, that's kind of where I, I would go. Um, so letting the wood be the piece that is the beautiful piece rather than trying to embellish something that already is beautiful is sort of my uh, taste. Do you ever get a piece of wood and you have an idea about what you're going to do and then you get this, you, you get this, the, you know, this piece of wood that changes the direction of what you're going to do because of how it yeah. looks. And because you're yeah. just talking about the grain, so the grain could kind of steer the direction <coughs> of the way you're going to kind of yeah. design it. Right? Absolutely. So, yeah. so on this, this table, I selected the table so that the grain would look the best in its orientation. I mean, each of these legs could be oriented in four different ways. Right. And I put the grain of the leg, the best grain, on the show side. Yeah. Sure. You know, yeah. I, I built the top to make it look like the grain was continuous, that it didn't look incongruous with itself, that okay. it didn't look like a jumble of grains crisscrossing or intersecting. Right. Um, you know how epoxy river tables are sort of a big thing right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, I've got a couple of walnut slabs and just figuring out how to make that look because what you do is you take the live edges and you put them to the inside. So figuring out how to do that is, it's a neat design challenge. And that itself is a very like Nordic kind of old school technique because in that shed building class they were talking about they would look at the wood and see what it wanted to be. Yeah, and then they would, you know, oh, this is the bow of the ship because it, the tree is naturally doing this. And this is yeah. what it is. Oh. Uh, now I just have to let it become. So, that. That's cool. um, the Aleuts and the Inipiaq Indians, when they would be carving scrimshaw, it's not that they were carving into the walrus tusk; they were just taking away the excess to let the shape come out. What's you the, know, old the Michelangelo? You know when he, he uh, yeah. You know, sculpting marble. It's like the arts yeah. in there. You just got to chip away the pieces. Yeah. Into it. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. So, that's how so I'm trying about, to make... That's I'm, how I feel my mother feels about me. <laughs> the daughter I want is always in there. We just have to get rid she's of the negative chip parts. Away, <laughs> chip away the parts. She's yeah. watched a so lot of shines. documentaries on shipbuilding, weirdly enough. That's, <laughs> there's an odd corollary to woodworking there, but <laughs> it works. Child so <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm I'm going with this. Yeah. Is I want to I wanna make the the wood, the focal piece, rather than embellishing the wood and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I, I am prone to use a, a minimum amount of stain. Uh, I don't like to do a lot of ornate uh, embellishments like carvings or rosettes or anything like mm-hmm. that. You know, the beauty of the wood is the fo- is the beauty of the piece, and so. that's what's timeless. You know, that's what yeah. doesn't age and what kind of holds its. Self. Yeah, you were talking that's, earlier about that simplicity, and that's where that real, the real longevity of design goes yeah. is just in, this, right. in the simplicity. Well, it's very cool. I, I'm, I'm really excited for you. I know you're kind of new in the adventure, and I think um, just with time, it's going to get better. You're going to develop yeah. those sketches into your style, which is really right. interesting. Right. And uh, I think everybody in Huntsville needs to help out with that and bring yeah. you projects. So tell everybody where's the best place to get a hold of you and where they can uh, start giving projects to you to, to help you. Uh, to kind of cultivate that design style. 
Okay, so you can reach me through ddaggettwoodworks.com. Right. I have an email address there. Um, also, I'm on Facebook at DD Daggett Woodworks on Facebook, and then you can ses- send me a message on IM. Is that even a thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Cool. Awesome. That's, Great, thanks that's so much way. for coming in. Thanks yeah. for bringing the pieces. Oh, and what he didn't say is that he brought Ooh. us these, oh, yeah. these uh, uh, beer coasters. We're going to call them beer coasters. Cedar. They're cedar, cedar beer coasters that smell like my childhood. They are awesome. They smell like your what? <laughs> your childhood. Oh, your childhood. If right, you, exactly. If you spent your childhood in a cedar closet, then yes. There you go. Once oh, again, easy. my mother's <laughs> been trying to chip away. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in, man. Thank Appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. All right. Good. You got it? You think we got everything? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. That was awesome. Very good.